Hi, and welcome back to Thinking Kingdom Thoughts. I'm Tracy, and I just appreciate you coming back every week and checking things out, um, seeing where we're at and who we have next. Uh, we're in the season of miracles, and uh, that will be finishing up pretty soon. And then we've got a special treat ahead for the next season. Um, I think everybody's looking forward to that, too. Um, so uh, today's guest is Sandra, and um, this is part two for her. If you watched about a month ago, you got to see some of her miracles, and she wanted to share more, guys, and this is so fantastic. So, um, do you want to just kind of update us and give us a little bit about yourself? Okay, um, so where we were last time with part one was, um, Tracy asked me what the biggest miracle, I guess, of my life was, and I said the biggest miracle of my life is my life, um, God saving my life through, um, a lady that was willing to pray when God said this woman needs prayer and prayed for me and didn't even know what she was praying for. And I was in the midst of, of thoughts of suicide. And in the midst of my thoughts, all of a sudden I felt hopeful and happy. And I knew somebody was praying for me in that moment. Yeah. And I figured it was probably her. And I called her and got a hold of her later that afternoon. And I said, you were praying for me this morning, weren't you? She said, yes, God put you in front of my face. And I just started praying. I didn't know what for. Yeah. And it turned, turned me around, made me realize. It, it's so amazing when you can listen to the Holy Spirit like that. Oh, you know? yes. And um, that happened to me once with my neighbors. Um, God just put it in my heart to pray for them. And I didn't even know why. I just started immediately praying for them. And... Um, Right after that, we got a phone call, and their property was on fire. And she called, and she was like this voice like I've never heard come out of D before. You know, and it was, she was so frightened, and she said, there's 60-foot flames going in your direction. Get the animals and get out, wow. you know. And so, I mean, we had horses and dogs to take care of and all that, and uh, it was very tragic, but there was miracles out of that. Um, someone had taken a dozer and made a fire line, which stopped it. Oh, good. But, uh, there wasn't a fire line where it needed to stop at, and it did. And that was a 500-gallon, um, HP tank. Um, and I don't know how much gas they had in it, but... Um, you know, natural gas is going to... Yeah, they'll blow up either way. Yeah, they'll, they'll take a hill off. and make it flat with 500 gallons like that. Yes. It, it's a pretty serious deal. It, uh, it would have probably wiped out our farm too. And uh, God took care of that. He had taken care of it before we even knew. And so when you get those feelings to pray for somebody, pray. Because that person Absolutely. must mean need that right away you know and um i i used to like when someone would say will you pray for me this was years and years ago i would say yes i'll pray for you and then i'd be in church and they would do a praise report and i'd be like oh, i can't even be a part of that i forgot to pray so then i got in the habit of i am pray praying now mm -hmm. pray right then and that way, you know, it's it's immediate help for that person who needs it, and it's it it keeps us disciplined. Disciplined. You know, we would want the exact same thing if it were us. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, yeah, I feel like I have my hand up too long. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um, do you mind leading us out in prayer? Not at all. I almost forgot that. We don't want to. Here we are talking about prayer, and I almost forgot. Let's pray. <laughs> oh, Holy Father God, we thank you so much that you care so much about us, and you ask us to pray for others, and you ask others to pray for us, and with our corporate prayers, Lord, it, it is amazes me 
that prayer is required. We do have to be obedient. We have to step up and say those prayers when you ask us to. And then you act on our faith and our obedience. I thank you for that. I thank you for those miracles. I thank you for the many miracles of my brothers and sisters that are on this channel. I thank you for Tracy doing this channel so that the testimonies, the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb is going out to people. It's there and it's amazing what God has done, is doing and will do. Never be discouraged to pray. Never give up. Never stop praying. Lord, just encourage the people today, I pray, to never stop praying. That is my prayer. And that you will be glorified with our words today. That's for me. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. I, I just, I love it when I hear stories that he has been glorified so far. And yes. I, of course, the folks that come on, they are glorifying him by even showing up. So thank you for doing that because he is a mighty God and he definitely deserves it for sure. He does. Yeah. He definitely does. I've also had those times, um, like my daughter and I'll just start praying for her. I'll leave my desk and go to the bathroom or, you know, this was back in the day yeah. and she would call me a few hours later, a day or two later, mom, guess what happened? And I'm just like, Thank you for telling me to pray, you know. Yes, because absolutely. Because it definitely happens. And when people pop in my head out of the blue and I'm not sure why I'm thinking of that person for no reason, I just stop and pray for them. Yeah. No, no. And I often wonder, too, what generations prayed for us without us knowing it, too, you know? Yeah. That, um, that thought always amazes me, too. My um, great-grandma was... Um, a very committed person to God. And she would even ride her horse and buggy. That's how old she was. To the church, which was like three miles out of town. That's a commitment. That is. Because a horse, you know, will usually go about five mile an hour. So, you know, it would take her almost an hour to ride there. That would be like us, you know... Going an hour away, you know, which we, which I we do. do. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy did it for uh, a while, a long time. A year and a half. Yeah, yeah, because our church was down here and I was very, um, very spoiled. Um, yeah, because you're right around the corner. Yeah, I was right around the corner and, um, and then we rented another space out and then it was only like a couple miles from here. Um, but now it's like about an hour, hour and a half, something like that, to get there. So um, Probably, yes. Yeah. Because it was an hour and 10 minutes from my house to here. So Yeah. yeah. And I live 20 minutes from there. So Yeah. But, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Worth it. But worth it. well <laughs> worth it because um, the, the, I call it our tribe. You know, I, I just appreciate everybody there. You know, and I tell people, if you meet one friend there, you've met 30, you know, or more. And we have grown so much. Yes. We've had people come from out of state. Um, we came from Ohio. Um, one of the reasons was, well, God just made it so uncomfortable in Ohio that we, it was just, we got to go, you know. And I found out after my husband got a job out here, that this is where Lex was. And we was only like three miles from the church when I moved out here into my son's house. Could not believe it. That close. I was just like astounded, you know, because he said close to Oklahoma City, you know, so I'm expecting it to be in the big city. And it ended up being in Yukon which was where my son was. It's like, this is, God works in such amazing ways. He does. He really does. Yeah. And when we moved here, and this was another huge miracle when we moved to Oklahoma, um, because I was in Nebraska and there were several situations that were very uncomfortable, you know, yeah. and, um, I had been putting in applications in Tulsa, in the Tulsa area, and I thought that's where I wanted to be. 
and where I needed to be and uh, nothing was panning out. And so finally some other things happened that just, I, we have to leave now. And I did, I put in, you know, I told my bosses three weeks and I'm out. I rented the house I was living in and, and I got a U-Haul and filled it up and took off and I got to Tulsa and that wasn't where I was supposed to be. Yeah. And, uh. I couldn't go back, you know. Right. There that, was no going yeah, back. Yeah, not expensive moving. So I, yeah. I started calling all my prayer warriors, all the people that I knew that you know could really get in touch with God, and they prayed through that. And um, one of them was my cousin, a very close cousin of mine, and she had just the week before moved down to Duncan, Oklahoma, from Colorado. Wow. And was in the middle of a, a house deal, in the middle of buying a house. Yeah. And the people they were buying the house from were like, no, they can come and stay now. The, the sale of the house doesn't have to go through. Let that, that woman and her child come and stay. Oh. So wow. we took off and went down to Marlowe, Oklahoma, and was down there for about six months until I found a job in the city. Uh-huh. And we were able to... And right before I had to move to the city, um, my... My other house in Nebraska, somebody called me up and wanted to buy it. Just out of the blue. <laughs> so, right there, I had moving money and, you know, money to get me through for a little while. And that was that was just the way it's been ever since I moved down here. Because basically, God said, you know, who are you going to trust for your income and your protection? And I said, I'm trusting you. Yeah. So I basically jumped ship and started walking on you water. You are such a brave woman. You were walking on water. I mean, seriously. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I thought I had a place to go. Right, right. <laughs> but God had other ideas. And, and it, it just, everything just fell into place. Where, from where I, we lived to Dominic's schooling yeah. to um, money. When we didn't have money in the bank, money just coming in. Yeah, I I went, I went back. when you told me about all that, I was just it's, astounded. Yeah, it is. It is still astounds me. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. That money would just come in when we needed it. Yeah. And if it... And from crazy spots, like you, that you were spots. not even expecting, you no, know. Not expecting. <laughs> yeah. No. One of them was even a, a letter that... And I'm terrible about opening my... Terrible about opening my mail. <laughs> but I had gotten a letter from the place where I had kept my 401k. And they're like, we sent you a check and you never cashed it. What do you want to do with this 2000 some odd dollars? Yeah. I probably would have, you know, spent it maybe on something I didn't need or I wouldn't have it at that time. It wouldn't have still been in savings or whatever, but it came at a time when I needed. Yeah. You know, that, oh, that's beautiful. A couple thousand dollars to pay some bills. Yeah. So Absolutely. That's nothing to joke at. It's nothing to that's joke about. Money. To yeah. be able to keep paying your bills on time and, and not miss any when you know the money you're making at your job isn't making it. Right. Yeah. So it has. It's been absolute miracle after miracle. Yeah. And yes. the timing is just, the timing never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. It's like I've said before, he's rarely ever early, but he's, it's perfect timing every yeah. time. Yeah. You know, it, um, yeah. And if it's late, it's my fault. Yeah. I Cause we something it something I probably shouldn't. Have. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I have to, <laughs> yeah, we have to take the blame in there. <laughs> well, and I used to be a lot better at that, Tracy. I really did. I would ask, I would go into a store and I would ask God, if, is it okay if I buy this? And he would tell me. I would get a sense in my spirit whether it was okay or not. Yeah. And walking that close with him, it really uh, grows you. Yes. You know, um, yes. I used to get, and this is going to sound so stupid, but I would get so overwhelmed when I'd go into my closet. What am I supposed to wear? What am I supposed to wear? And um, I finally, I was just like, God, what do you want me to wear today? And I do that often now because um, I just want him to, to be there at the very start of my day. That is so beautiful. I, I wish I would. I usually look at the weather. Yeah. <laughs> like what I'm going to wear. I'm not that yeah, smart. That, yeah, that's I have another friend, though. That she does. 
And she took me to um, a surgery, one, one of my surgeries she took me to, it was a shoulder surgery. And um, she asked God that morning what to wear. And as it turns out, I needed what she was wearing wow. to walk out of the hospital after surgery. Oh because my. what I brought to wear wasn't going to work out. Yeah. It was wow. so cool. I mean, those little things that are so huge. Yeah. Because he cares so intricately about every part of our life. I used to love to say, God knows the end from the beginning. Yeah. But... I got even more excited when I realized he knows every second in between. Yeah. Every second. Yeah. It's amazing. It really is. It really is. We we have had as humans a tendency to put God in a box. You know, a human box of, oh, you know, because I'm only capable of this, then that's where he's at. And that's just not true. When When it dawned on me that I was doing that, you know, um, he can hear our prayers. He can, he's om, omnipresent. He's, there's just a lot of big words that he is. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't come up with all of them right now, but okay. just that he is wonderful. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. And to know second to second is pretty amazing. And when you start inviting him into your life and seeking him out, you'll see him more and more in your daily life. You know, um, people... If we invite him in and we're willing to be obedient and we ask, he will answer. Yeah. We don't... It is not wise idea to wait until some big, huge thing happens and you need a right now, yeah. out-of-this-world miracle because the out-of-this-world part of God is how he is in the everyday. Yeah. He is in the everyday. Oh. Uh. And, that's and that is what is so beautiful about him. And that is what walking with God is. Yeah. So I know you know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I'm human. I just need reminded just oh, like everybody else. I you do know? too. I do too. Um, I, when, I, when I give advice sometimes, which is very seldom, <laughs> but if I'm asked and I give advice, <laughs> then I say, now you'll probably have to tell me the same thing in five minutes. You know. Um, because I'm human and I need reminded as well. I don't know. So, um, your miracles, um, just living day to day with him, that's a miracle in itself. It is Your a life is a miracle because of that suicide thoughts that you had. That was an attack from the enemy, wasn't it? And I, I can't even count how many times I was almost in a bad wreck. Wow. And I know people get in wrecks, and I know things still happen. I saw two on the way here. But I honestly, the amount of times I could have been in a bad wreck yeah. are, are just countless. And to me, that is a miracle. And I know that some of our friends are talking about how they're having vehicle issues and mm -hmm. engine troubles and this um, and that going on with their vehicles not being reliable and how they're praying over their vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that is also important. Yeah. Because I remember when I was young and my best friend told me, well, maybe you should just pray today. And she was kind of being a little smarty with me. But I did. I stopped and prayed. Yeah. And later that day, I was almost in a wreck. In fact, if you ask me, I would say we transpired through each other. Because that vehicle was just not there and then it was there. But I prayed that morning. Yeah. On the advice of my friend who at the time was not a believer. <laughs> I was just, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, just I mean, seriously, yeah. you take that stuff seriously. The ancients did. Yeah. They completely depended on God for, they knew yeah. every moment of their life depended on him bringing the rain and that the crops would grow and. Yeah. We think too scientifically these days sometimes, you yeah. know, yeah. Too, too, with too much reason. And we, we don't give God, who is the living, invisible spirit, the yeah. credit that he deserves for everything that he has created in the way life brings life, brings yes. life, like a tree that gives life to bugs and to birds, and birds eat the bugs, and everything gives life, and it gives yeah. shade to the grass underneath it which is also alive yeah and living and it's just beautiful when he yeah. showed me that how everything is life 
yeah. and gives life and brings life. I was like, wow. Yeah. That now, some so folks beautiful. would take that and start worshiping the creator. No. We need to worship the, the creator. creator. We yeah. worship the creator who created it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And by by just recognizing all the things that he does, you know that there was a creator. The wisdom that's in it. Yeah, absolutely. The beauty that's in it. Yeah. The life that's in it. Yeah. It is amazing. It's yeah. Beautiful. When you think of just a little tiny seed becoming a huge tree... That's a miracle. It really is. Yeah. It really, really is. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. There's some, when I uh, took dendrology in college, there's some seeds even that have to be what they call scarring. And that's where a bird has to digest it first. And then when it uh, releases that, um, then it has fertilization to go with the seed. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And when I heard that, I was like, oh, boy, you're of course. just totally of course, awesome. Of course you figured that out, God. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So That's cool. What a mighty God we have. I must say, though, um, the prayer thing. I, I, do you still struggle? I still struggle sometimes with praying. Mm -hmm, sometimes. I'm, in, I'm in the middle of a season right now where there are so many things going on that need answers to prayer. Mm -hmm. And when you have to keep praying and, and be diligent in that prayer and keep asking. Yeah. And, and sometimes I'll think, why do I have to keep asking? But he answered that for me too. Oh, good. Okay. He answered that for me in the story of <clears throat> the man who came knocking on the door wanting bread in the middle of the night because he had company show up. Uh -huh. And the guy was like, I'm not going to open the door and get bread for you. <laughs> But the guy it's just the middle of the night. Yeah. The guy just kept knocking, and finally he's like, you know, it wasn't because it was his friend or anything else, but he wanted, to, you know, because yeah. he kept asking, I'm going to get up and get what he needed. Yeah. And I don't really think of God as being that. Well, I'm not going to give it to you because it's the middle of the night kind of person. Right. right? He's really not. Yeah. But he really does need us and expect us and want us. To be diligent in our prayers and to ask and to keep asking. Yeah. And, you know, we see that just as parents. We do. You know? Yes. And and he even says that. What what do you do as a parent but you give to your children, you know? And yeah. um, we can really see that as parents. That we would not want to know that our children are doing without or our grandchildren. You know? But we also don't want to spoil them by giving right. them everything they ask yeah, for whenever makes, they ask for it. Yeah, that's true. There's a we have a little bit of wisdom. We have to he, pray about it. Yeah. He has that wisdom for us because we are his children. Yeah. But, you know, it's not just the prayer and supplication, Tracy. It's, it's the worship and the praise. I know that there was one time I was asking for a, a touch of healing because I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain. I was crying. I was in so much pain. I couldn't sleep. I had just worked a night shift and I needed to sleep. And I, I was beginning to get frustrated. I'm like, why, why won't you answer this prayer? Yeah. And he's like, will you praise me anyway? And I'm like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I just began to praise him and praise him. Just everything I could think of. You are so good. You are great. You are faithful. Everything you do is right. And then just everything I could think of to praise him. Yeah. And eventually it subsided and then it fell asleep. Wow. But praying through is one thing. But praising through yeah. is also a manner of prayer and just worshiping him anyway. Even when the answer's not coming. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Even when the answer's not coming. Yeah. Because we talk on here and, and it tells the end of what our prayers has given us. Yeah. You know, by talking about the miracle. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we said, sometimes he's really early, but he's always in perfect timing. And so um, through that, we have to learn. And what you learned was invaluable. Yes. So praise him anyway. Praise him anyway. Yeah. And what I've learned since coming out here is that the singing, the worship, is a warfare. It's, yes, it's, it's, it is. It's a way of fighting the evil one. And, but I'm um, on the run. 
Yeah. And, you know, the world would tell you so differently. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in a trial and you start singing, uh, folks are going to go, why would you do that if you're, you know, whatever it may be. If you're going hungry, why are you singing? You know, why are you praising? Because it's spiritual warfare. Because it's going to finish this trial. Because he's worthy. And I couldn't believe it when I started seeing it work over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, um, Connor falling off of a 30-foot cliff. And I, when I heard, I just started singing, and I'm not that great of a singer, but I just started singing and praying at the same time, you know, just praying, but in a singing voice, um, that he would be okay, that you are healing him now, and thank you for the healing that you've been giving him. And um, all of those things started coming out, and he just received a miracle because he wasn't going to be walking. and. He did. He got that feeling back and didn't have to have a surgery, nothing. He walked out. Yeah. And as a precaution, they gave him a crutch and he used it, what, maybe a day or so? And well, I don't think it I got ever his saw way and he just went ahead and got rid of it. But yeah, that seeing those things will build your faith too. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I love hearing other people's testimonies. Mm -hmm. to sit around and, and listen to what how God has worked and what he's done and it's definitely very encouraging yeah absolutely so, yeah yeah praise is mighty important <laughs> yeah it really is mighty so if you get nothing from this today prayer praise definitely. and worship is huge it's very huge and it may feel awkward at first like it did for me like what am I singing? Connor fell off a cliff, but I'm singing praises because I know that I am supposed to. And I took what I had learned and started applying it. And man, I'm telling you, that was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. To see that God working in our lives. So many ways. Yeah, there's really, I mean... There's no end to the miracles, really, Trace. There really isn't. Yeah, it doesn't run out. It, yeah, it doesn't. It's not just one big thing. I remember I was at a, I stopped by a friend of mine's house. And uh, she was having a Bible study with another lady from our church. So um, I'm going to sit in on that, of course. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I want to learn. <laughs> and after, you know, they were done with that portion of the study, then we all just prayed and, and worshiped and I had actually I had just come from the doctor and picked up some medicine. I had a yet another UTI. Yeah. You know, because I, I worked at a place where I just couldn't get up and go when I needed to get up and go and I ended up having a lot of, you know, urinary tract infections. So I had just picked up my medicine. I hadn't taken it yet. But I knew that I knew that I knew in that worship I was healed and I never took the medicine and I've never had another UTI oh. in my life. Wow. It's one of those things where when God healed it, he healed it forever. Yeah. And it wasn't something you even expected for it to be forever. I wasn't even asking prayer. I wasn't even being prayed over. We were just praying. We were in his presence. Yeah. Tracy, I, I believe to this day, if we get in his presence, we, we can't walk out the same. We're not going to walk out the same. Right. If we're really getting in his presence and really worshiping, especially corporate worship. Yeah then when everyone is in one accord and in unity, yeah. then there is something that just touches the heart of God with that. Yeah. And he comes down and he makes himself manifest and he makes himself known. And, and without being prayed for, yeah, people walk out healed. Yeah. I was one Do of them. Do you remember when um, all the men got up and did uh, worship at Sukkot? The, with the sticks? Um, they were just, they, they, I think some of them did have sticks, but they were worshiping and they were dancing. Um, it was a way to get the men back involved again with the dancing okay, and I worshiping the, that way. This past. Yeah. 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 Just this last year. Yes. And I got to see video smoke rising up out of the center. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. 
because there's a, the dance is, you know, in a circle. And mm -hmm. there were so many men underneath there. They couldn't hardly fit another one, I don't think. You know, it was just so beautiful seeing all of our men stand up, or most of all of our men, all the men that I think that were there, all stood up and went and dedicated themselves to God in that way, you know? And um, that I appreciate the men of our church being so humble like that, yeah. that they just, you know, they go, they surrender. Yeah, it's beautiful when the dancers dance and it's even precious and more precious when, when the little children dance. Oh my that gosh. That is so I know. precious. Yeah. But when the men get up there and dance, that is a whole nother level. Yeah, that's powerful. That is very powerful yeah. because they are meant to be our spiritual leaders. Yeah. And when they get up there and lead and humble themselves in that way, that is very powerful. Yeah. Yes. We have a wonderful um, group of leadership. We really do. Um, we those really were handpicked by God, and you can't tell me any different. No. Um, it's just amazing how they live by example. They live it out in front of us, and mm -hmm. um, advice and prayer, and just it's just amazing what God does to place everything, every little puzzle piece together, and makes it exactly what it needs to be. And there are times when we need to ask, and there are times when God just knows, and He goes and says, that person needs prayer. Yeah. Because He he knows the ones that aren't able to put themselves on their knees in that moment. Yeah. And He asks us to undertake for them. Yeah. And that's what happened with me, and that's what's been done through me, and been done through you, and many people that I know. And I think that's how we bear one another's burdens. We um, we don't always need to know what's going on. No. We just need to be obedient to prayer. Yeah. Because if she would have, you know, the lady who prayed for me was just willing to pray. She didn't, she didn't know. She just know God said, you pray for her. Yeah. And she didn't call me up first and say, hey, do you need prayer? No, right. she, she didn't do that. No. She hit her knees. Yeah. In the church. Right. She went straight to prayer. Yeah. And never called me even after. I called her. Yeah. Because right, I felt right. the prayers. Yeah. She didn't even want credit for that no. by calling you. No. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I will do that sometimes when I remember that. You know, first of all, thankful to God and humbled. And I will pray just if there is someone out there who is having these thoughts right now, God. Let them feel my prayers the way I felt her prayers. Yeah. Save their souls and don't let this happen to them. Right. Yeah. So I hope that there are people <laughs> in yeah. that day that will, you know, yeah. that, I, that God will say, they're here because you prayed. Yes. Yeah. Those well, are the well, kind of jewels in my crown I want to be able to give to him. Yeah. Exactly, because uh, that's kind of our rewards uh, we'll be able to offer back up to him. Yeah, because it's all him. Yeah. It's and all him anyway. It is. Yeah, it so, sure is. And then the way he turns around and blesses us. Yes. When, you know, when he's the almighty God, you know. Um, just, I don't know. It amazes me every time. It really does. I... And I hope it never stops amazing me. Yes, you're yeah. absolutely right. That There's something to be said in that, that we never stop being in wonder as a child of the gifts that he gives and the way that he gives them. Because, yeah, we don't want our hearts to be hard. We don't want our hearts to be hard if, if prayers take a long time. Yeah. No? Or if they seem to never be answered. Or if they seem to be late. Yeah. You know, those are the times that we try to get there, get in there and go, you are great. You are good. You will take care of this. I'm done worrying about it. Yeah. Yeah, because he really doesn't want us in that state of mind of being fearful. Or frantic. Or frantic. Fear yeah. not is mentioned more in the Bible than anything else, I think. Is that you're not? <laughs> it, it's definitely in there a lot. I used yeah. to know 
like 300 and some scriptures or something. Wow. It, it's a lot. And um, I apologize by not knowing the exact amount, but um, it's just amazing. And But it tells us he does not want us to be fearful. He wants us to be faithful to him. And um, we can do that, folks. We can do that. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to hit hard times, but you will not be alone through those hard times. And he'll get you through that hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I look back sometimes on how he has just carried us through in so many ways. You know, um, when we first moved out here, I mean, we was paying for, my husband moved out first. We were still paying for a place in Ohio. And um, the miracles we received living in two separate places. And I grew so much in being Torah observant by having that time alone. And I look back and I think, I don't think it was an accident that it was nine months. Because, you know, a baby is being delivered in nine months. And it just made me feel like he is bringing me right out into this beautiful thing like you just get excited about your bible again because once you start learning and learning and learning more you know it just opens up so many doors it really does um and of course lex is our shepherd and so i would just encourage you if uh you don't know where to start at um of course your bible start in genesis and go through um, but there, Lex does um, break some things down to help you learn how to do that kind of thing uh, on your own. And he always encourages us to do those things on our own. Um, he has the Q&A on Tuesday nights. And um, even last night he was saying, don't just go by what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm showing you how I do it, um, how I study the Bible. Um, and what I've learned from it, I will share in this in the Q and A's. But I also, you know, want you to get in there and read it for yourself. And God usually has additional messages for all of us. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Yes, I find things when I'm studying. I double check myself when I have, you know, my little favorite memory verses or whatever, and I just. I'm like, I want to go back and read that in context and make sure I'm not right. misunderstanding or misinterpreting or misusing that. I want to make sure that I know. And if someone's, I've studied the Bible enough and it's never enough. It's never enough. Oh, yeah. Because it's so beautiful and there's so much there. But I've studied the Bible enough that I can sit under a sermon and realize something's not quite right here. And I'm going to go home and check this out. Or yeah. I can hear a song on the radio and some of the lyrics of the song, and I'm like, I don't know the way the Bible says it should be. Right. And there's a lot of things that we need, and the Bible says that a lot too. Guard your heart. Yeah. Make sure that no one deceives you. I was reading that this morning. I have a, I went through the New Testament, and um, every time a verse just seemed to light up, like, ooh, this is something I could pray for someone for. Yeah. I would write down the verse, and I would write down, you know, the prayer. And I put it in this spreadsheet. And so I'll sit there and, and I, I'll go through this spreadsheet and pray these prayers from the word. Yeah. You know, and. Oh, yeah, that's. So that's also another way to pray that's extremely powerful. Yeah. Is to pray the word of God. If you're not sure what to pray, look up something in the Bible about my next Bible study is going to be belly because right. I have belly problems right now. Another friend of mine has belly problems right now. Yeah. So I'm going to go look up everything I need to look up about the belly and the bowels and, and see, you know, what I can find and, and build a prayer from that. Yeah. Yeah. And check my life and how I'm eating and how I'm living and how, how my brain is working, how I'm thinking yeah. and whether or not that's affecting, you know, my health right now. Right. So, yeah. Well, that, that's a good study. Yeah. I did one. Um, I, I was kind of like new in this tour of walk. And um, like I said, we were selling the farm. And um, I had 
bought the farm in 1994. It was just an open field. So I knew where and helped put in the electric lines, the water lines, the sewer, the septic. My sister and her husband and brother-in-law um, taught me so much, you know, about how to put those things in yes. and would bring down their equipment um, to get me moved onto the property. That's and nice. I was just looking at pictures last night because my granddaughter asked for some pictures. Um, and I was looking back through and I had really said, I want this to be my heaven on earth until I meet my maker. And so I had put my heart into this property. And um, I knew God was making these other situations so that it was impossible and I needed to go. But I was hurting inside that I was letting it go because everything was where it was supposed to be because I put it there. You know what I mean? Um, and so I woke up one morning and there was this moth in my mouth. So I'm coughing and hacking it and washing it out. Oh my goodness. I go to walk to the bathroom and a moth just barely misses my face. I'm in the kitchen talking to my nephew and a moth leaves the light of the fish tank to fly over to my mouth. I found a, a moth in my cup. Like, and I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> this is happening way too much. What are you trying to teach me? And so I did the study on moths. I looked up everything that moths were mentioned in the Bible. And... It was the scripture of don't put your heart in things that rust and corrode, you know, and moths, moths will destroy. Wow. And that was what I had been doing. Wow. He wanted us to leave and follow him. And that's exactly what we ended up doing. And that's beautiful. I thank him for that. And it was two moths going in my mouth. And to this day, I'm telling you, if there's a moth around, I cover my mouth. <laughs> because, I, you know, I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> but, oh. yeah, that shows what a mighty God he is. That he just cares enough to just force us in ways that he knows is going to work for us. You know, he knew that after it happened so many times, I've preached this before, if it happens to you, a lot, it's you. <laughs> you know? You're the problem. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you have 20 marriages, that's you. You know, look at yourself and figure out what's going on. But, um, yeah, so the moth thing, looking that up in the Bible, um, and not knowing all the scripture, you know, I had not memorized everything to that right, point. Yeah. I had read the Bible through, but I did not... I had no clue, and when I read that, I was just stunned, absolutely stunned, and I knew then that my study was complete on moss, and I never had another one fly in my mouth after that, maybe because I always do this, but I really, you know, I don't feel like, uh, I hope I never um, put my heart in material things again. Um, I'll follow him. We can be pretty earthbound sometimes. Absolutely. In yeah. many ways. Yeah. He is so, I mean, he's such a gentleman to speak to us in a way that he knows we will perk up and listen and get the message. Yeah. He doesn't give up on us. Yeah. And so what if I have to ask him several times for the same thing? He has to ask me hundreds of times for the same thing. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think back on when the... Um, even the angel had prayed, and it took 20 minutes. When, when Daniel prayed, and it took 21 days for 21 the angel days, to respond? 21 days, yes, because he was fighting principalities. Mm -hmm. And so that's another reason why we continue. Maybe the angels take these prayers up to him, and he had gotten distracted. Maybe that was the message in that, um, putting that in the Bible. I don't know. Just don't give up and don't quit praying. Yeah, and I have seen prayers answered immediately, too. Yeah, I have. Yeah. 
um, just when you start seeing them work, it just gives you this confidence that you have a father who cares. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He loves us. Yeah. And he chose us. Yeah. He chose us to be in him. And that's another... Knowing we would respond. Yeah. And that's another miracle that we've had is by him leading us into this tour observance, which is like another step into this love story with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes. That he gave us eyes to see and ears to hear. He chose us, you know? And he chooses you to seek him out. He, he loves you very much. Forgotten anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's been left behind. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yes. Yep. That's right. So. Well, well, thank you for having me again. It's yes. Lovely I, to sit and <laughs> visit with you. I feel about, like this has been more of a girlfriend's chit chat. It kind of has <laughs> been, but yeah. we put some important principles out there about praying and praying through and praising and worship and dance and. And just building that relationship and having the faith in him that he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And he will answer. And he is sovereign. I don't I know that people love to say God is in control and I I love to say he is sovereign. Yeah. yeah. Because to me that's I just need that more than control. <laughs> yeah, it's Control is a little bit of a scary word for me, but well, sovereign is beautiful because he is king of kings. Yes, and that's the thing is that um, sometimes this is the language barrier between English to Hebrew. Um, like instead of saying that God has 613 laws, he really is saying in his word instructions. And that is a softer way of looking at it. But for whatever reason, when it was interpreted, it says laws instead. And Well, there's laws, there's commandments, there's, um, you know, there's lots of different words that describe the things that God puts forth for us. But at the bottom and at the heart of it all is his heart. This is his heart. Yeah. This is how we walk with him. This is how we're kind to each other. This is how we walk out serving him and helping one another this is how we walk out life yeah this is how we live the abundant life yeah is by observing everything that's important to him yeah if i'm in love with a man i want to know what's important to him i want to know how he wants his coffee mm -hmm. you know i want to know how what kind of food he likes to eat and the best way to sleep i want to know things about him so that i can please him yeah that just goes without saying for anyone right. who's Absolutely. ever been in in an adult Absolutely. relationship yeah. um, and you know and vice versa but we don't always think of God that way but I have to think of God that way because that's the human example that makes it make sense to me yeah I want to please him if I, if I love God I want to please him I want to study what pleases him yeah. I want to understand him as best as I can even though he's God and I'll never be able to, but I want to know his ways. As much as he's exposed as to much us, as we he want to is, know. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. want to learn everything I can learn about how to walk with God and properly fear him and give him the respect he deserves. We grew up with presidency. We don't know what it's like to have a king who, on his word, could have your head taken off. Yeah. We don't know what it's like to live in a kingdom or under a monarchy, yeah. per se. Yeah. And so all of these stories and words that are important because he is the king he is the one sovereign mm -hmm. and we don't go to him for advice we go to him for instruction exactly yeah yeah and no matter what you call it it's still an instruction it's still a, a guidance and what i found with all every one of them is that they protect us they protect us. And the world would say, oh no, this is funner over here. Until you've made a huge mistake and you're in this situation that you are so regretful of. Um, and then you go, oh, maybe that wasn't such a bad idea. In the first place. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that instruction 
Yeah. And even then, you'll pull us out of the rat mess we put ourselves in. Still pull us out of the rat mess that we... (laughs) Yes, you will. Yeah. Yes, he does. So blessed to have a God like that. Indeed. Yeah. And there was a few years when I didn't think that that was possible for me. Because I was born illegitimately. And I had read Deuteronomy's a little wrong. And it, I had read it that if you were an illegitimate child, you were cast out for, you know, 10 generations. And what it really meant was that you couldn't go into the, you know, the, um, the holy place, uh, which is for priests anyway. Um, but there, you weren't allowed in a certain area during that time period, but he came down and he said that he loves all of us and even died on the cross for that proof. And when I let it slip to my sister, what I had read, she goes, oh no, you've been thinking that. And she was my half sister. So she had never thought that way because her parents were married at the time. And uh, I was born in a similar situation. I also was illegitimate and never really thought that much of it. But when I got to Bible college, one of my Bible college professors was just very adamantly speaking about how God doesn't want anything to do that began in sin. Yeah. And I raised my hand and I'm like, I was born illegitimate. Does that mean that God doesn't want anything to do with me? You know, and everybody in the class was like, yeah, (laughs) you know, like, Whoa! Right. Good point. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because the the circumstances of our birth was no fault of our own. Yeah. But we were born into that sin, and we were born predisposed to that sin. Yeah. And we have to someday square with that and come to terms with it. And yeah, the the temptation of the same thing. Yeah. Someday hits our lives. I know it hit mine. Yeah. So, yeah. And we never stopped being terror. You know, we never stopped being kind people. I just felt like I just didn't belong. Mm-hmm. You know, I had something lost or taken from me. You know, that I, and I knew that I needed to be, open. even then knew that I should be listening to his instructions. Mm-hmm. I had just misunderstood those instructions. And so, um, always be careful with, translations that you read and um i think the blue letter bible online is helpful don't you i like it yeah because it gives you cross references and um explains to you what the hebrew words mean and where they're at in other parts of the bible and what that means and well studying is important because i i found that and i love to read the bible i really do i love reading the stories i i love just reading through it and the thing about just reading it is that you're not studying it and really learning from it how to apply it. And so I came to a point where I was just reading it and thinking, oh, this is such beautiful literature. And I wasn't even seeing the instructions. Yeah. I was just thinking, wow, that's that's really beautiful. Yeah. And going on with my life. Bad idea. <laughs> you really have to get that word in your heart and and like it says don't just be a hearer or a reader but be a doer of the word walk this out live this life yeah yeah because that is really important yeah (laughs) and that doesn't always come easy it generally it depends on how much flesh is covered over that um that stubbornness in us Mm -hmm. you know um that first time of thinking we know the way yeah you know, you know how to be good. Yeah, the first time we repent and we apologize to another person, you know, um, it 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 may be hard, but it it does get easier, I think. Um, you know, to talk to a person if you have some kind of a difference, and you're going to, um, and and just talking to them and saying, hey, this has bothered me, and I want us to work this out. That's a beautiful thing. 
Um, and at first, it may feel difficult for you. Um, for me, it did at first because I had a lot of flesh in there. A lot of flesh. And I still have flesh that I struggle with. We call it pridefulness or stubbornness or just having a really strong need to be right or justified. Yeah. And Oh, yeah, that's a big one is when you have justification for why you're mad. Yeah. That's an even harder one. Yeah. Yeah. But it can, it can be accomplished and it can be worked through. And we've seen that in our own congregation. I've seen it in my own life. And um, so it can be done no matter where you live, whether it's Oklahoma or somewhere else, it can be done. You can be in that kind of a community and work through those kind of things in your day to day life, going to work. Not necessarily just talking about your own community, but um, out there. That's how we show our light to other people. It's not our light, it's God's light. And that's what you're showing and representing. Um, but thank you again so much for coming. And um, I love the talks we have. And I'm sure you guys probably feel like you just had a window in there to a uh, couple Fly of girlfriends along. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up though. I mean, the last thing you brought up about relationships. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, that that also is a huge miracle. When you can repair relationships and, and have things go back to just as if yeah. it had never happened. And that is a miracle because people can hold grudges. Yes. People can hold on to bitterness. And people and will justify, oh, well, but I just need to be careful about what I say or who I talk to because right. you know, I got stabbed in the back that one time. And it's, it's huge, it's hurtful, it's painful, it's bad. Yeah. Something went wrong. But the fact that we can apply the word of God to that relationship and, and go and say, okay, I am sorry for being offended. I am sorry that I held this against you. And God requires that we do it. Yeah. It's one of his instructions. Yeah. Don't come to me praying if you have something against somebody. You go make it right with them. And that is a miracle. Yeah. That's a huge miracle. Because yeah. people are happy to go on with their lives and just set that person aside. Yeah. Most times. Yeah. But I think it ultimately affects health, too. I think it there's absolutely a affects there health. with that as well. It yeah. absolutely affects health. Yeah. yeah. Lots of Psalms and Proverbs about that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. About how we live and think and what we hold on to and what we let go of and how that affects our health. Yeah. And yeah. scientific proof, I'm sure. I haven't looked it up, but. Right. <laughs> well, again, thank you guys for coming again this week and um, enjoy God's journey along the way and look forward to next season that we'll have here. Okay, and again, just love each other, um, love each other, and love each other, and love, you know, forgiveness and praise and prayer and everything that was yes. talked about yes. here. Just follow through with all that, and that is what's going to help you enjoy God's journey. Mm -hmm.